Let's cover a few different options for powering the MixPre 10T. This is a power hungry device. <laughs> you have to expect that because of course it has eight inputs. It can phantom power all of those at the same time. It's got high quality analog digital converters. It's got a screen, lots of power requirements. There are a variety of ways you can power this. Of course, the default way or the way that you're supplied with the device itself is a battery sled for eight AA batteries. And um, four in here and then another four fit in up on the top here. I really view this for re from a realistic perspective, I really view this as a bridge battery. This is not something, unless you're doing a very short piece, it's gonna be 15 minutes or something like that. I wouldn't recommend you rely on these for longer shoots. And by longer shoots, I mean basically anything over an hour. And even that, you may not get a full hour depending on what you're doing. So. That I really see as a bridge battery, but what I mean by that is when I have this installed, I also have an external battery connected. And this is just there so that if I have to switch out this battery, I can continue powering while I'm switching out that battery. Now, an additional option is something you can purchase. This is a another battery sled. This one holds Sony NPF style batteries or Sony L mount batteries. Sony L mount batteries generally look like this. They come in a variety of different sizes. This is actually a clone. It's not an actual Sony. Um, but there are a lot of different companies that make these at this point. These are pretty nice because these can power for a significantly longer period of time than the AA's, and you can actually fit two of them in this tray that goes something like this. Now that's a little awkward if you're going to put this on a table, um, but it works a little bit better in most bags, although some people have complained about this as well. For me, this works pretty nicely in a bag. Um, and it powers for a significantly longer time. I would say it's realistic to expect you can get about three hours. Um, again, it depends on the size of the battery and how many mics you're phantom powering, so on and so forth, and all the things that you're doing, but I think you can get a more realistic time frame with these, and what you can do is you can pop one out and another one back in and still be powering from this battery, so it's a pretty nice system that way. Now, this is probably one of the more affordable approaches to powering the Mix Pre 10T. And there are some external battery options that are a bit more expensive, but also will give you longer powering time. So let's run through some of those. This is called a Hi-Rose 4-pin input, or Hiroshi, I've heard it called as well. Depends on <laughs> where you're at. It seems like in the UK, I mostly hear Hi-Rose. In the US, I often hear Hiroshi. In any case, um, this is a 10 to 18 volt input. It has a 4-pin Hiroshi connector that looks, the other connector was going to look something like this, again, with 4 pins. This is a female connector, this is the male connector. The nice thing about this type of connector is that once it goes on, it actually locks. So it's not gonna pull off, which is nice. You have to release it by actually pulling back the sleeve like that, and that disengages it. So this is probably the least expensive option I've found. This is a 12 volt lithium ion battery bank, and it has a couple of different options. There's a USB option, which we're not gonna use, and there's this DC barrel. And I also purchased this custom cable here that has DC barrel on one side and the Hiroshi on the other side. So what you can do here is you just plug that in, power this guy on. You can see we have our little battery indicator here. We have four out of five uh, right now. We can plug that in. And then we can power the MixPre 10T for a good bit of time. Now, this is not the highest capacity, and this is a fairly affordable approach. I think, as I recall, this battery was well under $100. I believe it was somewhere in the $30 to $40 range. I'll put a link for it down below so you can see the current pricing. Um, but this will power it probably for, again, depending on the number of microphone inputs I'm using and the number that I'm phantom powering, this will probably power things for, again, like the NPF style batteries, probably about three hours, maybe four hours if I'm not doing a whole lot with just one microphone or maybe one mic and one lav. So that's an option as well. I guess one of the downsides with this is that the DC barrel here can pull out pretty easily, so there's no locking mechanism. Of course, you could always just take some gaff tape and tape over that so that it doesn't pull out. Um, and there's this kind of large exposed switch, <laughs> which um, could potentially get knocked off as well, but generally not gonna be an issue. And if you're careful, that could be a solution that might work for you depending on your budget. The next higher option is to use a cinema style battery. These are batteries that are actually designed primarily for cinema cameras, um, but they are 14 point, uh, let's see, 14.8 volt usually. And they're much higher capacity. You can see this thing is much larger. 
And what you can do with this is they have a DTAP output, uh, which is this two pin output here. They're very common on cinema batteries. And with a cable that has a two pin DTAP to four pin Hiroshi, you can power your mix pre. These will last basically all day, depending on the capacity you get. This particular one is a 150 watt hour battery, um, which is what a lot of the cinema batteries are. They're also 90 watt hour batteries. So if you wanted something a little bit smaller to, to carry around in your sound bag, you could do that as well. But this one can basically power me for 10 hours. And um, so that's a really nice option. This particular battery, the juice box runs about $150 US with the charger. When I purchased it, I'll put a link down below so you can check the current pricing. Um, but this is a really reasonably priced from my point of view. I realize $150 for a battery and a charger sounds really expensive. But if you are going to be doing longer shoots and you want to be able to have the ability to power for the entire day, which is a really nice thing because you've got enough things to worry about on the day of a production, this is a really nice option. So now probably the most expensive solution for powering your Mix Pre 10T and one that a lot of pros use are battery distribution systems. That's what BDS stands for here. This particular one is from a company called Remote Audio. And the way this works is that you have a single battery. We'll talk about that in just a second here. This is a uh, what is called a high Q style battery, but there are others as well. You plug that one battery into the battery distribution system, and then you have outputs for each of the devices in your bag. So you'd have one output that would go here to your mixer, your Mix Pre 10T. You'd have another one for various wireless units and things of that nature. So it's nice because you can run the entire bag from a single battery. Now, in terms of battery types, there are two main battery types that are used for battery distribution systems. This one is a high Q style battery. And you can see here, uh, let me just pull the tape off. Okay, so it has this sort of receiver cup for the battery. And those are the, the contacts for the battery are right here. And then the cup just fits in there. The reason I put tape on there, gaffer's tape, is that that can actually pull out in the bag. And so I like to put some tape on there just to keep it from uh, pulling out while I'm in the bag. And then of course this end connects to the battery distribution system. So we'll go ahead and connect that. Um, the nice thing is that you have a switch here to power all of them off at once, except you do have one slot here that can actually continue to receive power even when all of the others are turned off. Another nice thing about these is that these are locking plugs, so they cannot just pull out, and it has a nice big clip to actually attach it inside your bag. So you can see there are a lot of things that they've really thought through in terms of making this useful for an actual mixing bag. These are the locking plugs that go to provide power for each of the different devices. So this one, for example, is for the Mix Pre 10T. I would attach that and screw this in so that it can't pull out. The other end, of course, is four pin Hiroshi, so we would just plug that in here. Again, that locks as well, which is nice. These batteries are very much like the cinema battery batteries from the standpoint that they also supply 14.4 volts. And again, most mixers, including the Mix Pre 10T, can take that and work with it quite nicely. This type of battery will supply power for the Mix Pre 10T, again, depending on how many mics you have hooked up and how many wireless, but it can easily go, in my experience, about four to six hours. And um, as I say, this is probably the most expensive option. These batteries here are around $100, as I recall. I'll put some links down below for those as well. But it's nice because they're a lot smaller. It's easier to fit this in your bag than a cinema battery. And, um, I've got a charger that can keep those charged up. So I've got two that I switch between and two of them can usually get me through a single production day without a problem. You also have here, I don't have one of these, but there is also an add-on you can add to this, which gives you a readout on your battery status. I don't actually need that because these batteries have their own readout. And I usually slide it in the bag so that this is facing the top and I can see the current status of the battery. You also have this illuminating switch here that also gives you kind of just a very gross uh, read on how your battery's doing. One other option to consider, if you are using the Mix Pre 10T as an audio interface, for example, or you're recording near the source of AC power, you can use this AC to DC adapter that plugs into the Hirose or Hyros input. So that is available. We'll put a link for that down below as well. So now once you've attached your battery, one other thing that is important to do is you have to tell the Mix Pre what type of batteries you're using. You might ask yourself, well, why is that important? Can't it just figure it out itself? Well, no, <laughs> it needs a little help. So first of all, for the battery type, you'll want to set the type of battery you're using in the one of the sleds. 
And the reason this is important is that this tells the mix pre how to read the battery that's there. Different battery chemistries react a little bit differently in terms of the voltage that they supply and the amount of current they can supply. So what you need to do is tell the mix pre what type you're using and that does two things for it. Number one, it tells it how much battery remaining you have. So it gives you a more accurate meter of how much remaining time you have on that battery. But it also informs the mix pre 10 t when to shut down. You don't want to undervolt your electronics because that can actually damage them. So it needs to know what type of battery you're using so it knows when to shut down and when to be concerned about something. Because different battery chemistries react differently. When they get close to the end of their charge, they will react in different ways. And that's why it's important to tell the mix pre what type you're using. So here, for example, on battery type, you have nickel metal hydride, which is typically what I use. If you're using alkaline disposable batteries, you can choose that. And then here, of course, is the L-mount or the Sony NPF style batteries. So you just have to tell it which of those you're using. So this is nickel metal hydride, that's an alkaline, and that's a lithium ion style battery. So just tell it what kind you're using. In this case, we're gonna leave it at nickel metal hydride because I'm typically, again, using the AA sled in that case as a bridge battery. And then you also need to tell it what type of external power you're using. So you have a variety of different options there. Remember this particular option here with this power bank is a 12 volt. And so we put external power 12 volt, but you have a variety of other options depending on what you're using as well. So for example, let's just adjust this here. Here, if you're using some sort of nickel metal hydride, you could indicate that um, if you're using a 12 volt uh, lead acid battery, you could use that. And then if you're using one of those cinema style batteries, this is where you would use the 14 volt lithium ion. Okay, so we wanna make sure we set that correctly. Here, here's an illustration of why that's important. So for example, right now this is a 12 volt battery. Let's just tell it that we're using nickel metal hydride and let's see if that makes a difference. Look what happened to the meter before it was at full. And let's get in there again and change it back to what it should be. And now look at the meter goes up some. So it's important again that you make sure you set that per the type of battery you're actually using. Mm -hmm.